Okay. Um, we have a very interesting poll released by Pew Research yesterday. Um, and what I'm most interested in is some of the specifics here. Um, they polled a number of questions about the two candidates. Um, and there were just a whole lot of fascinating results here. So we'll start with um, how it's a particularly polarizing election. This is shown um, in metrics of e e basically how many of you agree that either one would be a good president and how many of you think that neither one would be a good president, right? Well, the first statement, only 8% of people think that either one would be a good president. Um, and only 21% of people say that neither one would be a good president. Now, that's low. It shows years going back here. For example, in 2016, that number was 41% that said neither one would be a good president. So you kind of see right off the bat there a little bit of a product of the difference in perception between Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden, right? Because it's not Trump. Trump is just as polarizing now as he was four years ago. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested in... in that particular metric, especially because Biden is not substantively a very different candidate than Hillary Clinton. That's just a product of the Clinton name and how, you know, Republicans very successfully smeared the Clintons in ways that Joe Biden has not been susceptible to. Um, but if you did, if you dive into the record, you know, ideologically, they're very similar and Biden's very corrupt. There have been books written on how Joe Biden has enriched his family using his political positions. Um, you know, just like Hillary was, that's one of the main things that was so disliked about the Clintons, Clinton found Foundation, speeches to Wall Street, all these kinds of things. Um, Joe Biden behaves in very similar ways. Um, the accusations of, you know, his his son's position and on a board that he had on a, of an energy company that he had no business being on on the board of, while his dad was vice president. And, you know, like um, so, a lot of similar allegations to the to you know the situation that sort of uh, tanked Hillary's reputation. And yet, because it's not brought up, because the media has not really said much about that because Trump has pivoted to this ridiculously stupid strategy of calling Biden far left instead of attacking him as the insider that he is, the Democratic Party insider that he is, the corrupt, you know, same old Washington that he is. He, no one believes Joe Biden's far left. Who the fuck believes that? No one believes that. But everyone believes he's an insider. He's a moderate centrist, pro-establishment, pro-corruption, you know, all, this kind of, all these kinds of things. So why aren't you hitting him on that? You know, it just doesn't, from a strategic perspective make very much sense but this result is kind of a product of all those things brewing together where biden's perception is significantly different than hillary's perception was in 2016 and i think that's one of the main reasons why um this looks to be a very different election than 2016 um now we'll get to some things later in this in this uh poll that that kind of indicate it's very similar to 2016 in a lot of ways but that's you know some of the nuances of the information here so um Let's go down to the next portion I wanted to talk about, which is um, the top reason for supporting the candidate that you support, right? So with Trump supporters, it's a pretty even dis distribution at the top four or five here, okay? 23% say leadership performance, 21% say issues policy positions, 19% say he's not Biden, 17% uh, say he is for American people and values, 16% say um, vote for Republicans against Democrats, you know, and then it goes 11, 12, 13. So it's not, it's kind of an even distribution. People like various things about Donald Trump, whatever insane people support Donald Trump, like various things about Donald Trump. But you notice the he is not Biden portion is at 19%. Okay. Um, that's kind of the one that stands out here with Joe Biden. The he is not Trump is far and away the first at 56%, 56. Okay. So most people vote, a majority of people voting for Joe Biden are not doing so because they like Joe Biden. They're doing so because they want to get Trump out of office. They would be voting for anybody that's on the Democratic ticket right now. So um, I want everybody to remember that when Joe Biden or when presumably when Joe Biden takes office and people try to say that there's some sort of mandate for the neoliberal centrist agenda. Bullshit. Bullshit. Joe Biden is winning because he's not Trump. That's a mandate for nothing. OK, um, you know, the next highest category here is leadership performance for Joe Biden at 19 percent, 56 percent say I'm voting for Joe Biden because he's not Trump. OK, moving on down here. Um, so the next question is essentially um, 
while you, basically of the person you support, what most concerns you about the person you support. Okay, so Trump supporters say temperament, he's rude and narcissistic. Okay, use of Twitter is second at 14%. Um, Joe Biden, age and health, top it at 31%. But number two is issues, policy positions at 15%. Um, and then number 12 is performance as a candidate, right? I mean, we all know what's he, he's I, I take no pleasure in pointing out that Joe Biden is losing it. I feel bad for the guy. It's not something that, you know, it's like a medical thing. I, I would. But it's worth pointing out when he's running for the highest office in the land. 12 percent of people who are supporting him are concerned about his performance as a candidate. Um, but 15 percent on the issues. That's that's significant to me because that that is it's different than only 9% of Trump supporters are concerned about the issue. So um, you kind of see that people are voting for Biden despite disliking him and not just disliking him, but having disagreements with him. Um, and, you know, I, I think that sets up the kind of, of environment that is similar to 2016. Um, so, you know, con where I was talking earlier about how I think that there are a lot of differences between now and 2016 because of the polarization of Hillary versus Biden. I also think that there are a lot of similarities here in the later portion of this poll where they talk about how people are not at all excited about Joe Biden. It's similar to Hillary Clinton. There were very few people who were excited to vote for Hillary Clinton. Um, people were voting against Donald Trump. And quite frankly, that was true of Trump as well, where most of them were voting against Hillary Clinton. It's a slightly different dynamic this year. Um, I think all in all, that probably bodes well for Biden because he's um, he's taken a hell of a lot less hits than Hillary did. Um, and, you know, we'll see if that changes going forward. I think this enthusiasm gap does still leave the door open as much as I think it's very likely that Joe Biden wins the election in November. This kind of enthusiasm gap genuinely does leave the door open, right? Joe Biden's also particularly susceptible to totally tanking it at the debates. Who knows what's going to happen when he's required to, you know, respond to questions in a live setting? Who knows? Um, Trump's not going to go easy on him. I can tell you that if you th if people were mad at Bernie supporters for pointing out Joe's cognitive decline, you just wait till Donald Trump gets up on stage and calls him dementia Joe or some bullshit like that. I, I mean, he if anyone thinks he's above that, I, <laughs> um, you know, so it, this is going to probably turn quite ugly. And I don't think Joe Biden is a particularly good candidate for an ugly campaign. Um, this enthusiasm gap does leave that window open. So I'm very fascinated to see what happens here going forward. Um, the polls have also kind of leveled off and are starting to tip more in Trump's, like, you know, come back a percent or two where, where Biden's leave it, leading by seven or eight nationwide instead of nine or ten nationwide. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting setup here. We'll see, um, we'll see what, what this all means in November.